last 10 points have come in the paint. Now here is Holiday. Deflects the pass. And here we go. He kicks it to Bates. That's good. 15 seconds left in the first quarter. Now here is Holiday. He's tightly guarded. Oh! This sort of awesome dunk is one of the reasons this team is in charge of this game right now. Mark, there is a swagger out here on the court that they possess and are not afraid to show it either. That's right. Those are phenomenal dunks to watch. So much fun. And they're scoring pretty well as we conclude the first quarter. It's Chicago leading by five. From the United Center in Chicago, back in a moment. the second quarter just getting set to start hey guys what do you think about the offensive approach we've seen so far for the Bulls tell you what guys they're showing us a lot of energy early on and racking up those fast break points and the other thing they're doing is forcing a lot of turnovers and that's helping them to get easy points at the other end one thing with Wade that doesn't seem to be going away is his quickness off the dribble. He still has that devastating crossover. He may not be able to do it every night, but there are nights when you know, he just looks like he's right in his prime. And let's now go to the sideline. We'll catch up here with Doris Burke. Doris? Guys, last year, Dwayne Wade set a career high for field goal percentage at over 52%. D. Wade said, quote, back when I had the team, I was the top player. Shots I wasn't comfortable with. I made some, I missed a lot. I have a different role on this team. I don't have the ball all the time, so I need to take shots that come and understand which shots are my shots. Kevin, you gotta love the dedication to efficiency for the team's sake. That's why he's a champion, Doris. Thanks. And Wade has a number of elusive moves, Clark, <laughs> in the way he hit the spin, the arrow yeah. step, which I love, by the way. Yeah. And the, the windmill crossover. He's got it all. I mean, he's figured out how to get to that bucket. And I think the crossover is probably his custom move. Just as he changes direction, he swings the ball quickly over his head to the other side, avoiding the rip. And he makes it look so natural, you might think nothing of it. But youngsters around the league go to school on that one. That's a heck of a move. <laughs> And here in the second with about a minute and a half gone by. Number 10. And a strong finish with two hands. Taking it to the rack with power right there. And hammering down with the two-handed slam. Well, they already had him staggered, and now all of a sudden they're throwing some haymakers. Back to Johnson. Some nice ball movement here by the 76ers. Six to shoot. Number 11, and again, it's Philadelphia. Well, you know, when they need a big three, he's the guy they look to. He's about as reliable a deep threat as, as you're going to find. And you know what, Steve? We also have to talk about his shooting. I mean, the fact that he coached with tight D better than anyone is something to make note of. His percentage stays the same, and if he's wide open, he's automatic. And that's out of bounds. Chicago will retain possession. He feeds it to Miritic. Number six. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. Well, there's a new ownership group in Philadelphia as of 2011, and this offseason they pulled the trigger and brought in new leadership in the front office. Looks like they're jumping on the analytics bandwagon, hiring the former brain trust of the Houston Rockets. Sorry. And he takes the feed in stride and slams it home. Now, this is why the breakaway rim was invented for plays just like that. Well, he almost brought the whole thing down, Clark, by hanging on that long. <laughs> yeah, he did. Uh, it was a great dunk and also a great game we've got here. Torres gets it to go. And the Bulls lead by five. And back to the Sixers. I guess for the Wall Street ownership group, going mathematical is something they will you know, stay pretty comfortable with. Well, it's something that a lot of teams are going to now. Kevin, uh, you know, the, the new owners, a lot of them... Uh, businessmen, they want to turn to math to try to figure this whole thing out. 
Bottom line, though, is it, it's a combination. It's not just stats. It's talent, stats, yeah. chemistry, coaching, a lot of things that goes into winning. That's a mammoth dunk for someone who's far from the biggest guy out there on the floor. Yeah, perhaps that'll give them the boost they're looking for to get out of the hole here. Yeah, it should. I mean, if that doesn't fire them up, I don't know what will. Now the 76ers on the break. Boy, the floor really opened up for him there. It sure did. I mean, that was a very late reaction from the defense there. Here in the second quarter, just under three and a half minutes played, Dunn passes to Miritich. And he runs it down hard with one hand. How about that? Breaking out the Statue of Liberty on that dunk. A nice way to pad that lead a little more. Yeah, you got that right. Deflected. Last break. Here comes Chicago. Boom! He jams it straight down. Good aggressive finish on the break. That's as easy a two points as you could ask for. The 76ers trail by seven. What a great play to sacrifice his body and take the hit. Yeah, yeah I thought that was excellent awareness and anticipation to beat him to the spot there. And the 76ers making a change here. The Bulls have gone seven of 11 from the field in the second quarter. Pass to Dunn. Simmons tries again. Number seven shakes off the strong D and gets to the bucket for two. That's some tenacity inside battling for the second chance points. Here's Dunn and the layup's good off the glass. And the Bulls lead by seven. He's found a rhythm here in this second quarter, guys. He looks good. And the Bulls making a change here. The Bulls have gone 8 of 13 in the second quarter, well above the 50% mark from the field. The shot's good from Lopez. Some defensive breakdowns are starting to show up now. Their last four buckets allowed have come from very close range. And giving up these easy chances is going to do wonders for their confidence. Well, he won't miss many of those, especially with the defender not in the best of positions yet. Number eight, defended by Simmons. Lopez dishes to Miritich. Here's Dunn. Good on the three-point shot. And now a 12-point Bulls lead. He's really starting to ramp it up now, getting involved in the offense here after being held without a point in the first. The 76ers shooting has been just great so far, up at 56%. Out of this world, aerial skills for a guy of his size. Kevin, that's what separates him from some of the other point Ooh. guards around the league. The ability to rise and throw it down. And I wouldn't be surprised if that spurs them on. Maybe he sparks a little bit of a comeback here. Pass to Lopez. It's all in by Saric. The 76ers trail by 10, and Doris Burke has something for us. Hey, Doris. Gentlemen, this summer, the Bulls broke ground on a new 60,000-square-foot practice facility situated just east of the United Center. Starting next season, it will replace the 12-year-old Berto Center, a half hour away in Deerfield, Illinois. The Bulls coming back downtown and doing it in style, in a state-of-the-art building with all the amenities including a rooftop green terrace. Kevin? <laughs> Pretty impressive, Doris. Thanks. Nice abs and determination that time. Uh, hard to get to the rim. We know he can bounce. And right there, an example of how dangerous he is when he's got a path to the hoop. And, and you love the versatility, guys. Being a point guard, and in this situation, they tack on two more points, expanding the lead in a, a pretty deflating way for the defense. Back to Lopez. Tipped. And now Reddick pushing it up. No one back to stop him. And that one's good. 